Okay, so the final, the final experiment today, I've got three seven items. I've got my gamer, the 1951 McGregor Tommy Armor 985. I've got my other favorite blade is the uh, 1964 VFQ 7-iron. These are all set up pretty similar. And, uh, and then the uh, Chad Deeds just made this 7-iron here at ABS spec from Forward Golf. And it's got a little bit of that little texture on the face. I'm curious whether that spins the ball a little bit more or not off that texture. So I'm going to just compare these three clubs so we'll go ahead and the VFQ here is interesting because it actually has dots on the face. So that's really old school, but it's kind of like, love the, love the head. It's not all dots, it's grooves and dots. I think this was the last club that actually had dots on the face. So, yeah, we just had lunch. This will be with the Callaway ball, the Callaway, the Callaway Chrome. Okay, the VFQ, that was start well. And that went 157 yards. Spin rate is 68. 74. Okay, 6874. I'm going to expect this to be a little bit more. This is the 1951 Tommy Armour Silver Scout. Six degrees flat, no offset, little face progression actually. This one is again a 1964 DFQ with a propel shaft in it. Yeah, 
Yeah, I'm just... Uh... Huh? Okay. And now we'll go to Chats Club that he made. So these are similar because the specs on these clubs, how I set up my clubs, at least what I'm concerned with, I'm concerned with the lie angle, I'm concerned with no offset, so a little bit of face progression, I'm concerned with the dead weight, the overall weight, these are 16, uh, just about 16 and a half ounces in dead weight on these clubs. So the dead weight and the loft is all going to be the, the same on these clubs. So, I forget what these were, uh, I have these uh, up there <clears throat> on the last, but they're all the, they're all the same. All right, so just one more time, do one more round. So back to the VFQ. And that's it really well, 75.50. Okay, so now I'm back here, and what happened? Well, all three of these seven irons were set up with the same specs, 
they're all 36 inches in length they all have a dead weight of between 16 and a half and 16.7 ounces the lofts are all 36 degrees and the lie angles are all 56 degrees so these three clubs the 1951 Tommy Armour Silver Scott 985, the 1964 McGregor VFQ, and the Forward Golf 7-iron uh, just sent to me by Chad Dietz, all set up the same. And now we can look at the results. The 1964 VFQ 157 yards, 150 yards, 154 yards. Spin rates, 68.74, 81.99, and 75.50. The 1951, 985, 155 yards, 154 yards, 150 yards. Spin rates, 76.49, 85.49, and 83.60. And the 2025 Forward Golf 7-iron, 154 yards, 151 yards, 155 yards, 77.49 RPMs, spin rate, 81.50 and 74.50. So now let's look at the averages. The VFQ, 153.6. The Silver Scott, 153 on the nose, and the Forward Golf, 153.3. I mean, I'm pretty shocked, actually, that am I really that good with my distance control? Well, apparently so. All three of the clubs had an average of 153 yards. Um, you know no difference at all. The spin rates for the VFQ 7541, for the Silver Scott 8186, the uh, Forward Golf 7783. Um, probably these numbers would all end up being about the same if I were to <clears throat> take a higher sampling rate here and hit another 20 balls with each club or something. Uh, there's a much more discrepancy in the spin rates of these shots than the, than the distance. Um, spin rates are you know, thousands of RPMs going on here. But they're all pretty similar, ranging from 75 to 81 and 7,700. So, you know, I, I would say it's not likely that the 51 Silver Scott is is going to be spinning the ball more than the the um, forward golf club, but uh, you know who knows. But I'm I'm thinking that all that stuff probably averages out, you know, pretty much, and not really much difference. I, I don't even know what the <clears throat> ball hitting into a green, the difference between a 7,500 spin rate and a 7,700. What that would even do? I mean, is that going to spin the ball back an extra? six inches or something I you know I, I, I don't know what what that would even be so you know what's the takeaway from this is really that it's all about the physics and the geometry of how you set up your club that's about it um, you know if you want to play the old stuff play the old stuff if you want to play the new stuff play the new stuff you know I, I think at this point it becomes other things you know you like the look of the club you like the feel of it you know, you know there's something about it that's just you heard a story about it um, you identify with it somehow you know it, it's it's kinda like wine tasting or something um, you know you like a barrel fermented Chardonnay as compared with uh, steel fermented or something um, you know, the aesthetic look, you know, the lucky club thing, you know, this is my favorite club, you know, all that kind of stuff. It just really comes down to that. 
Um, I've been hitting the um, Silver Scots. Why? Because I've been uh, working through the Hogan modules, and Hogan was hitting a club that would have been like this. So that's why I'm doing that. Before that, I was hitting the VF Cube for quite a few years because I think that's the best blade I've ever seen. You know, it's got a little bit more bounce on the bottom and a thinner sole, and I, and I like that club for playing off hard pan and a little sharper leading edge and just feel like maybe it's a little better out of the rough cutting through the grass or something. I mean, you know, this is just, you know, wine tasting stuff, really. I mean, all these clubs here perform the same, you know, if they're set up with the same spec. So, anyway, I, that's why I don't spend a lot of time in these labs. I mean, I don't... All this did was just confirm what I've been saying for 20 years. You know, makes no difference. I mean, if, if we were to throw in the hickory shaft, we already did that experiment, and no difference with the shaft. So, had I had a hickory shafted 7-iron here with the same specs, it would be right here doing the same thing. So, um, <clears throat> have has there really been any innovation in the game of golf since the 1930s? Yeah, well, certainly not much since the 1950s. You could probably argue the hickory shaft thing a little bit. might have a little bit more torque or something. Most people say they feel better. So what is the technological advancement? It's the driver, and it's the trampoline effect coming off that driver. That's what that's what's happening. That's what's sending the ball farther, and that's what's changing the game. The ball going 15% farther off that driver, and courses having to then be 15% longer to accommodate this. That's what's happening. Okay, we'll see you next time. Over and out.